Dr. Sherry Kohlberg. I'm a professor of exercise science in the Department of Human Movement Sciences at Old Dominion University in Norfolk, Virginia. And what I talked about was really the impact of exercise on, on insulin resistance. What can we do with exercise? How are we able to impact that? Now, you got to keep in mind that skeletal muscle is really the main organ in the body where we have the capacity to store excess carbohydrates, excess lipids, and, and so as, as such, it's a very important area to address in a very important way that we can actually use exercise as a type of medicine. So there are, when the body is unable to store carbohydrates, process lipids appropriately, then we develop what's known as insulin resistance so that whatever insulin the body releases doesn't have the same impact and it takes more insulin to get the job done. And then we also can end up storing lipids places that we don't need to have them and carbohydrates can be turned into body fat and, and stored in the liver inappropriately. So starting with the skeletal muscle, that really is the critical point. And for some reason, doctors, we all overlook the fact that skeletal muscle is so critical in our ability to metabolize food and store food and reduce uh, hyperglycemia and also hyperlipidemias. Now with the skeletal muscle, there are a number of studies that show that we can actually reverse insulin resistance systemically by making the skeletal muscle more effective at storing carbohydrates and lipids. We can do that two ways. We can do it acutely, where a single bout of exercise will actually enhance insulin action for transiently maybe one to two days at most. And there's also a training effect so that when we train regularly, we can upregulate uh, mechanisms in the muscle that are associated with insulin signaling so that at rest, when insulin binds to the muscle cells, we can have increased uptake of uh, both fat and uh, carbohydrates. And what we're also able to do with exercise is, as I was saying, upregulate things like the GLUT4 transport proteins, the activity of glycogen synthase. A lot of that transient increase in the insulin action is really related to glycogen replacement. Now, glycogen is the muscle's form of uh, carbohydrate, the, the stores that we have in muscle. And when you exercise, you use some of that muscle glycogen up. And the, the effect is really dependent on how much glycogen you use, so the exercise intensity and the exercise duration. Using more is always better, generally, in keeping your insulin action heightened for longer. With training, we can also have increases in lean body mass. And what's really good about the studies is that they show that all types of exercise can have an impact on insulin action, both aerobic training, uh, various intensities and durations, and resistance training. Resistance training may have a slightly different mechanism, but also does enhance insulin signaling and GLUT4 protein in the muscle and and increases our ability to store carbohydrate in the muscle. If we can store it in the muscle, then we can take it out of the bloodstream and prevent hyperglycemia. Now, the two other tissues that I mentioned, uh, one is adipose tissue, and it seems that that also can become resistant. And one way that we can actually uh, have a positive effect with exercise is to lose the type of fat that seems to be most metabolically active and most implicated in terms of insulin resistance, and that is the intra-abdominal visceral fat. And there are a number of studies now that show that exercise is the most effective means of reducing the amount of visceral fat that people have stored. And in fact, in studies where they've looked at isocaloric uh, groups where they would have them diet and exercise, just diet or just exercise, only the groups that included any type of, of exercise saw significant reductions in visceral fat. So I think it's really actually not just where we store the, uh, how much fat we store, but where we, we store it as well. And fat is also, when it's stored in, uh, in visceral fat, it's, it's linked with some of the inflammation, the inflammatory markers that seem to exacerbate diabetes and hyperglycemia. And we're able to reverse that inflammation with exercise, which may be part of the mechanism by which we um, improve our insulin action. And then the third is the liver. And, and the studies in the liver in humans are relatively new. but. Uh, a couple that looked at that recently did not find any change in the total amount of fat that was stored in the liver, say, after 12 weeks of 
aerobic training or resistance training, but there are some uh, new studies that are uh, about to be published that show that we may actually change the the way that the fat is stored in the liver as well. If we can do the same thing in, in the liver as we do in skeletal muscle, where we change the storing it as metabolites that are, that are deleterious and store it as triglycerides, it may not actually impact the insulin resistance. And if we can do that, that would actually help a lot to reduce the resistance at, that we see at the level of the liver. So overall, exercise is truly one of the best types of medicine that you can prescribe to anybody. And I think it's been terribly underutilized. So what we have to do is change the way that people prescribe exercise, the way that we look at that, and look at uh, any type of movement during the day as being beneficial for controlling diabetes, for in enhancing insulin action, and for preventing complications of diabetes.